morning. A Savior has been born. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have a couple of announcements to make. Um, a meeting of the congregation of the First Presbyterian Church will be held January 10th, 2021, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> 21. Immediately following the worship service. The purpose of this meeting will be to review and vote on pastoral terms of call, presentation of 2020 annual report, and approved nominated ruling elder for a two year term. Also, uh, Delphine Anthony is retiring from being our church's librarian. She's been the librarian for over 20 years and she's done a wonderful job. If you're interested in becoming the new librarian, please contact a member of Faith Community. So please join me in a call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highest. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise, Praise him, you highest heavens, heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. And, and he, he established, established them forever and ever. ever. He, he gave, gave them a decree and they shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all beasts. Fire and hail, snow, snow and mist, stormy wind, fulfilling his glory. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts, beasts and all livestock, creeping, creeping things, things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all world rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Please join me with me in singing together our hymn of praise, Joy to the World. Number 40 in your blue hymnal book. <laughs>
grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all and teaching us to renounce what is evil in this world. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. God of grace and truth, in Jesus Christ, he came among us and has light shining in the darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light or trusted good news to be good. We have closed our eyes to glory in our midst, expecting little and what we can bless. Forgive our doubt and renew our hope so that we may receive the fullness of your grace and live in the truth of Christ the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear us now as we confess our sin before you. God has poured out the Holy Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might have the hope of eternal life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Welcome, Zoomers. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Merry Christmas, Scott. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, now. It's not over. On the church calendar, we see they have lived that the first Sunday of Christmas. Our culture may hope that Christmas is over. Thank you. 
for the purpose for his love. Oh. And while they were at the temple, these people met David and Anna. Simeon and Anna, both were older, both were faithful in their worship of God, and God rewarded them by letting them meet the Messiah. And after they met David, they told others about the newborn king. Verse 40 says, And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. But it certainly was the heart of the very good work. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for letting Simeon and Anna meet him to share the good news with others, just like the shepherds had done. Help us to remember that Christmas Day is the beginning of the story, not the end. Let us celebrate the gift of Jesus every day. Jesus as a baby, Jesus as a child, Jesus as an adult, and Jesus as the risen Messiah. Because of Jesus, we can truly sing joy to the world. Amen. Prayer for illumination. Holy God, our hope and strength, by the power of your Spirit, prepare the way in our hearts for the coming of your word, so that we may see the glorious signs of your promise fulfilled. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A good morning to you all. I hope you had a lovely Christmas. Uh, I was telling Chuck uh, just before we got started that uh, one of the things that we have taken to doing on Christmas night, so we eat our supper, uh, and then once that is concluded, we load up in the car and we just drive around <laughs> and go take a look at everybody's decorations and see how everybody has uh, prettied up <laughs> their uh, homes for the holiday, for, for Christmas, and so, uh, of course, the conclusion of the tour made a little loop when we went out, uh, oh, which way did we go? We went out west, that's the way, towards uh, uh, Adams and saw all the stuff over there, then went out to the country and saw the Lanzas and all that stuff, they did a pretty good job out there, and then uh, came back into town and Chuck's was, of course, the final stop on the tour, the, uh, the piece de resistance, if you will. So uh, that's what we did for our Christmas, uh, watched a couple movies, and just had a relaxing time. So I hope that that was something that was able to be done for you all as well. Um, of course, I want to give thanks to those who are persist uh, participating in leading worship this morning. So again, thank you, Chuck, for your organ playing. And uh, Elisa, thank you for your late leadership. Appreciate you. Okay, uh, our scripture reading today comes from, our Old Testament comes from Isaiah, and I'm going to expand to verse 2. We're going to read uh, chapter 9, verses 2 to 6, 7, instead of just 6 and 7. Isaiah 9, 2 to 7. Let's all now listen to the word of the Lord. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness on them has light shown. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel to the fire. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince 
of peace, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And our sermon text comes from the Gospel of Luke. I'm going to expand this one as well. Luke chapter 2, verses 25. We're going to go all the way through 38 instead of stopping at 35. Luke chapter 2, 25 to 38. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak to him, speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. The word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. And now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, our rock and our redeemer. We spent a lot of time in Luke throughout the Advent season and kept our attention primarily on the quote unquote main characters Zechariah, Elizabeth, Mary, Joseph, Jesus himself. Today, we'll take a look at a couple of lesser-known characters from Jesus' birth narrative. We just read about Simeon and Anna. They are handled together and fall under the same piece of Luke and narrative, which is why we need to talk about them at the same time. Simeon and Anna's encounters with the baby Jesus happen when he is approximately three months old. Now, Simeon and Anna are counterbalances to each other. So, therefore, note needs to be made about how Luke made an intentional effort to include Anna in his narrative, and specifically to give her a voice of comfort. Anna is indicated in our text as a woman who was only married for seven years, and then lived as a widow for all the rest of the time up to about 84. And as we'll recall, women were often married very young then, so you can imagine she's been a widower for 60 years or so. Even in today's day and age, it's hard to be a widow. In those days, it, in those days, when women were not even counted as a second-class citizen, but instead as property to be exchanged and bartered by men. She is a quote unquote insignificant figure. And yet here we have Luke giving her a very important piece of the narrative 
that declares to the world the birth of a Savior, God with us. She is a voice of comfort for a beleaguered, beleaguered people, declaring to them that their redemption was at hand. The comfort that Emmanuel, God with us, provides is that those whom the world count as less or inferior or insignificant or unworthy of attention, God declares worthy. To those who are crushed and oppressed and to those who do the crushing and the oppressing, God declares that such crushing and oppressing is unjust. This is the comfort of Emmanuel. We should expect, right? We should expect, of course, the baby Jesus would encounter a wise and old faithful male who had been led by the Holy Spirit, the Gandalf type figure. That is Simeon in this case, what was unexpected and therefore all the more poignant was Anna's appearance immediately to follow. Despite her less than ideal circumstances, Anna's placement as a counterbalance to Simeon was a significant indication, was a significant step towards God's declaration that all all are equal. Men, women, children, which for some even today still seems to be quite the elusive concept despite its biblical veracity. Anna is specifically associated with those awaiting the redemption of Israel, a comforting notion indeed. Redemption means rescue comforting notion. Simeon is associated with consolation. So, of course, when hard theological words come up that we are familiar with because we've heard them a million times but have never actually had them explained or defined, we turn to a dictionary. Simply put, consolation is this comfort that we speak of today. Consolation is comfort. So not only did Israel need redemption or rescue, but even before that, Israel needed Consolation, comfort. Why? Well, no. How about a refresher on Jewish history? If you'll recall from sermons past, we've talked about how, due to Solomon's sons, the kingdom of Israel was divided into the northern kingdom of Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah. Hopefully, you'll also recall that in their division, they could not stand against the worldly forces that would consistently come crashing against them from the east and from the west. It was equal parts God's punishment for Israel's unfaithfulness to God and their disobedience and their failure to practice justice and righteousness, especially when you read the prophets. And it was just plain a tough spot to be in geographically, especially back then when overground trade routes and massive caravans dominated what was at the time global trade. Israel occupied a choke point between everything east and the wealth and the majesty of the Egyptian empire and all of northeastern Africa. Trade had to go through Israel, which meant that ambitious emperors were not interested in bargaining safe passage at a tax, but just overrunning and taking the area for themselves. So, northern kingdom of Israel falls first in the 700 BC, to the 700s BC to the Assyrian Empire, and the southern kingdom of Judah falls second in the 400 BCs to the Babylonian Empire. All of this history can be found in 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Now, Ezra and Nehemiah are also historical books which do recount the rebuilding of the temple after the Assyrian conquest, but unfortunately, it all goes to pot after that again. During all of these various kings' reigns, both in Israel and Judah, and after Israel's fall, the prophets are constantly reminding people that they have neglected God, failed to practice justice, and as such, this is their fate. 
However, despite their forsaken, despite their neglecting God, excuse me, however, despite their neglecting God and their lack of justice, God has not forgotten them, nor has God forsaken them. God will not neglect them in response. And that's the gist of all the major and minor prophets, 16 books after Song of Songs. But from approximately 422 BC, the approximate date of the fall of Judah, all of a sudden the prophets stopped prophesying. And Israel is left in the lurch. From the fall of Judah to the announcement of John's and Jesus' births, the people of Israel have endured about 400 years of silence from God. After having been in a unique relationship, well, still being in a unique relationship with the living, dynamic, very talkative God of the universe for their entire existence, I hope you can imagine why the people of Israel might be waiting for some consolation, for some comfort. From their God who promised not to forsake nor abandon them. You can imagine them crying out, God, where are you? God, where have you gone? Where are you? That cry has not ceased. There are those who still make that cry this very day, crying out right now. Not to mention the fact that the people of Israel were also not a free people, but under the oppressive thumb of the occupying Roman Empire. There was great need for consolation, for comfort, for redemption, for rescue. The comfort that Emmanuel, God with us, provides is that those whom the world count as less inferior or insignificant or unworthy of attention, God declares worthy. To those who are crushed and oppressed and to those who do the crushing and the oppressing, God declares that such crushing and oppressing is unjust. This is the comfort of Emmanuel. Now, we talked about the prophets kind of constantly telling Israel, well, this is, you made your bed, you got a lion. However, it never ended with that. Yes, there was accountability, but there was always the reminder, always the reminder that God had not forsaken them, that God had not abandoned them. That's the reminder today. God has not forsaken us. God has not abandoned us. Maybe we need to check our vision to see God. The prophet Isaiah knew what this comfort was. We read from chapter 9, chapter 40 as well. There's a bit of scripture associated with the Advent season. Verses 1 through 5, comfort. Comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from I am who I am's hand double for all her sin. A voice cries, in the wilderness, prepare the way of I am who I am. Make it straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The temple had been desecrated destroyed twice. 
now rebuilt yet again. Jesus will find it in his adult life, filled with crooks and swindlers preying on people who try to make a quick buck. He will find people worshiping money in God's house instead of worshiping God. Indeed, comfort is needed. Rescue is needed. But it's not just Israel in need of comfort. It's not just the church in need of comfort. Did you hear the second part of Simeon's prophecy? He can depart in peace because his eyes have seen God's salvation, which God has prepared in the eyes of all the people. Not some of the people, not insert adjective here, people, all people. God's justice and righteousness are not just for some, they are for all. Simeon goes on to clearly identify that this revelation is a light unto all the world, all the Gentiles, and that it is to Israel's everlasting glory that the light, which is for all the world, found its source in the house of David in Israel. There is comfort for Israel. There is rescue for Israel in knowing that the Messiah for all the world has originated from them. Thanks be to God. And so, as the year draws to an end and we enter into reflection of the year past, the anticipation of the year to come, in what things have you been comforted? And what things do you need to be comforted? God is ready, willing, and able to comfort you, me, us, all. Not only has rescue come, is coming, is here, and is coming again, but consolation, comfort has come, is coming, is here and is coming again. Again, thanks be to God. Let us begin our time of response to the word of God, read and proclaim the good news of Emmanuel, God with us, by the recitation of our common faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let us continue our response to God's word read and proclaim through the giving of our tithes and offering. From the fullness of God, we have all received grace upon grace. During this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, we humbly ask that pledges, offerings, and donations be dropped off on the indicated basket in the narcos, either prior to or after the worship service. <laughs>
Thank you, God, for these gifts which we have received. Give us wisdom and discernment as best how to utilize them for the upbuilding of your kingdom. May your divine will be done, and not our will. Okay. I'm going to re for for Zoom and for folks. I'm going to review all those concerns and joys that we lifted up. So, um, Cheryl's grandson uh, Tyson came home for Christmas, so we're grateful for that. He's a Marine, is that right? Uh -huh. So he was able to come home. Uh, Todd moved his home. Sharon is home, <laughs> so that's a good thing. Uh, concerns: We've got a couple different travel mercies. We've got the McClure's headed back to Arizona. We've got uh, Nathan Falkenberg and his family heading out to California. 
Um, we've got uh, uh, Larry Steinberger having a heart procedure tomorrow. Uh, Chuck Olson is at the Mayo Hospital in Arizona. Uh, dealing, he's in recovery. He had a gallstone removed, and that kind of got some complications. And but but those are the results. He's clear. He's in recovery. Um, we still got the Lands family recovering from COVID, uh, Norman and Janelle. We've got some, the lobbies recovering from COVID as well, uh, both Terry and Linda. Uh, we got Sarah Richardson, uh, who got a little sick, had a little COVID scare, we think it's not that. So we're keeping Sarah in our prayers. Kurt is gonna have his last chemo this Thursday, so we're gonna keep him in prayer. Uh, Kirk and Cheryl lost their dog, so we're going to keep them in prayer. Like on Christmas, right? Yeah, that happened to me when I was a kid, too. So, yeah, I was in time. We'll, we'll, we'll pray for you guys. Um, a lot going on. But praise God that God is a God of comfort. Let us pray. God, we are ever so grateful that you came to be with us. Thank you for the Messiah. Thank you for revealing yourself. Revealing yourself most holy and completely in, in a baby who grew to become a man who knew he was the Messiah who offered himself willingly and defeated death on our behalf. Thank you for the comfort that provides. We are grateful for Cheryl's grandson Tyson having been able to come home for Christmas. We pray for, we, we are grateful for all the men and women who serve Extend your comfort to them. We are grateful for all who were able to come and be with their families. For those who were not, extend your comfort to them and to their families. We are grateful for our brother Todd's recovery, for sharing his return here to Lex. Continue to abide with Todd as he continues to recover. Thank you for the comfort that his recovery provides for his wife and children and for sharing. Oh God, we lift up to you those who are traveling. Alan and Madonna, Nathan Falkenberg and his family. Keep them safe. Go before them and behind them as you did with the people of Israel in the desert. May your presence be with them. We lift up to you Larry Steinberg, who's undergoing a heart procedure tomorrow. We ask that you be in the hands and feet of the doctors and nurses as they do their work. So that Larry might know that you are with him, that you abide, and that you are present in those who are physically with him. We lift up Chuck Olson to you. Ask that you facilitate his continued recovery. We're grateful for his existing relationship with the medical specialists at Mayo and for their ability to respond quickly and do good work and resolve his issue. Thank you for Chuck and who he is and continue to be with him and abide with him in his. I mentioned many in our congregation dealing with COVID and its related symptoms. So we continue to ask that you be with Norm and Janelle, Terry and Linda. Help them facilitate their recovery. May it be complete. Facilitate Sarah's recovery. May it be complete. Return to you as well. Jim Henderson to you, ask that you continue to be with her and Terry. And we lift up Delphine Anthony to you and her back pain, and 
once that uh, the procedure would do its work and be effective so that she might have some relief. You know, and as regards back pain, we can tell Sarah it's going to be useful. Hurt as he undergoes his final chemo treatment this Thursday. B with Kurt. Michelle has been the loss of a brother. Thank you for being with our comfort. He hears all these, meets all these, and is present in all these needs. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity human nature. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of Jesus Christ who came to share our humanity and who now lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Thank you for Emmanuel, God with us, who taught us to pray the same. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I invite you to join with me in singing our closing hymn, the first Noel, number 56, in your blue hymn.
I pray you receive this benediction from Hebrews. Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.